mon bonhomme. Je m'attendais pas à ce qu'un étrange retontisse par ici. Moi te dire, je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang, 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 si ça s'approche. <rire> Vois-tu le livre, là? C'est le Wendigo. Ouais, le Wendigo. Un guerrier qui devient un loup pour se venger de sa grosse peine. Et... Gomme-moi la belle rose de la tulipe, qui se donne au yob sur le mercredi des cendres. Si tu peux effrayer cette histoire-là. Touche pas à ça, l'enfant. Tu pourrais te faire mal. Ben oui, une couche. Tu peux-tu tout faire en même temps, toi? Touche pas à ça, l'enfant. Tu pourrais te faire mal. Hé, hey, la Corriveau. Batèche, ça te passe l'envie de te marier, la Corriveau. As tu es tous ces maris? Squeak, les uns après les autres. Pas de pitié dans le mariage. C'est vrai, le jeune, que tu te promènes quasiment en bobette. Une bonne police, ça te ferait pas de tort. Mais je vois te dire une chose. Dans ton coin de pays comme paris on n'a rien sans rien. Et où, mon caribou? C'est encore beau. Tout ce qui est vieilli est bien meilleur. <rire> Mon beau bonnet du beau temps. Puis ma ceinture, où ce que je glissais mon flasque. Le monde tournait plus bon quand on s'habillait tout de même. Gadon, ça ouvre la pantie. Prends là, je m'en fous. Perds ton temps dans mes déchets tant que tu rapportes du caribou. An axe, not too shabby. Carl felt he needed to protect himself. There, Carl had fed his mind, but had forgotten the harsh reality that his body also needed nourishment, especially in the dead of winter. That truck had obviously seen its share of gravel roads. Carl wasn't a mechanic, but he could easily tell that only the most heartfelt prayer would bring this old beater back from its slumber. With that cold, however, it was more likely that it would wait until next spring to wake up.
With a homemade shooting range such as this, it wasn't hard to imagine a stray bullet ending its course inside the flesh of an unsuspecting passerby. Granted, Carl thought, there wasn't much in the way of passersby around here. The place looked more like a pigsty than a house. A heavy stench of curdled milk, cheap alcohol, and boiled cauliflower filled the air. Rock music invaded the minds of men even in the remotest of places. The man didn't own a turntable though, so there's that going for him. Back then, in Africa and elsewhere, people were ready to take up arms to stand against the yoke of English imperialism. In Montreal, mailboxes were blown up, abductions were carried out, and violent manifestos were distributed to media outlets. But around here, in the great northernmost, all a man could do is curse out loud against the faraway evil and pray for the revolution to arise. That man, by any reckoning, was from that very stock. You had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all-surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. The rag reeked of fermented vomit. Carl wondered how one could bear to live in such gross and horrid conditions. Carl figured this recipe wasn't meant to yield a refined nectar. You had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all-surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. At Jean Bluin, seems like that pig had a name after all. If Carl had at any point wished to get his hands on some caribou, he couldn't have wished for better than a distillery like this one.
Sometimes, and especially around here, people are so possessive with their land as a dog is with hydrants. Another worrisome victim of this ice. This one seemingly petrified in action. The poor man, before being frozen solid, seemed to have been defending the entrance to his cabin. But from what? indisputable fact that machines like this entailed a level of intellectual finesse that Carl was lacking. The very first steps of man on the moon were made more than a year ago. The event had surely captivated the mechanic's mind for him to still keep this around. The week of October 5th, thought Carl. That was this week. The plug should have been here by now. Something very important must have been in there for the man to take such time and effort to hide it. But Carl didn't know how to reach it.
Carl had a hunch that there had got to be a plan somewhere that could help him put this thing back together. Carl hadn't lived up to his good finder reputation. He still hadn't found any of the wealth contained in Lamotte's lands. The man has a passion for intergalactic things. Back then, people were obviously scared of the Russian atomic bomb, but an invasion by extraterrestrials was a legit fear as well. Seems like the mechanic had made his choice. Boswell, Atamipak, same story. Large deserts conducive to extravagant follies. Weird stuff. Kind of a crossing between a colander and a hairdryer. What was it for? To play telepath? To protect against nuclear waves? Carl deducted this was a map of the area. Were those pins pointing to places of interest? It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. By following the plan, Carl was led to believe that the snowmobile's parts had to be scattered about in the vicinity. A bit of gas, a new spark plug and the key, and this thing would run perfectly. All he needed to do now was to find all that.
something fell to the bottom of the box. 